Little juicy fruit Wash away the night Well, welcome back. Home Wizards here, Cindy Dole, Eric Stromer, where we love to improve your home and improve your life. So now, Eric, this is a big story. It's about citrus, and I grew up with citrus trees in our backyard. I mean, my dad and I, we'd go in the backyard, we'd pick some oranges, we'd have some fresh squeezed, or as my dad would call it, squozed orange juice, even to the point where when I moved out of state in different parts of the country, he would ship me oranges from our yard so I could still feel a taste of Southern California wherever I was. And I know you have citrus trees in your yard. Yeah, boy, we sure we rely on them, too. We love them. We juice all the time. I, I pu- always pull a lemon or two off the tree when I'm making salmon or any other great recipe that I come up with. And, and if the thought that there might be an issue with our citrus trees really kind of overwhelms me. Yeah, it's kind of scary. So here's the deal. It was just this past week, all right? And we earlier, in the past couple of years, we talked about something that could be coming in the form of this bug that's uh, kind of no bigger than a flea. It's called this Asian psyllid. And, you know, that, that bug itself was spotted, and but then no signs of the disease that it can bring until just this past week. And it happened in Hacienda Heights, just east of Whittier, uh, south of West Covina, if you can visualize the area. And now they are under an agricultural quarantine because of this disease that's called several different things, HLB, or citrus greening, or you can also call it yellow dragon. And anyway, it's it's scary because it can be this, the death sentence for the citrus, but what does it mean, and, and can we save our citrus trees, and, and how does this disease become so um, incapacitating? I thought we would check it out and talk with our friend and garden guru and citrus expert, Lance Walheim. So great to have you, Lance. Good morning, Cindy. How are you? Great to be with you again, and um, boy, is this making you a little nervous like it is, Eric and me? We're, we're, we're kind of freaking out over our citrus. It should make everybody in California really nervous. Um, you know, we're in a, a war to save our citrus, and uh, I can't overstate it that um, home gardeners, anybody who has a citrus tree in Southern California, um, needs to be on the front line of this battle. They need to educate themselves, and we all need to be vigilant to look for these pests. Geez, well, let's talk first of all, I mean, when you consider that one in every four backyards in California has a citrus tree, I mean, we're all affected. What is this disease, and why is it so bad? Well, it's, uh, it's one of the most devastating diseases that citrus can get, um, and there is no cure for it, unfortunately. Um, it's a devastated citrus industries around the, the world and in Florida. You know, you and I were back in North Carolina last year, and, or last week, actually, and um, Tom McCubbin, who's a re- retired cooperative extension agent in Florida, I don't know if you heard what he yeah. said, but mm-hmm. they expect in Florida that within a several years there will be no home garden citrus. So that's what it's at, at stake. I mean, imagine what California will be like with no citrus. I mean, this is part of our history, going back to the missions. It's about our shared experience, like you were talking about. Orange so, County? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> it, would, it would just be called County. County. There you go. <laughs> Orangeless County. Yeah. Terrible. So it, it, it's serious. Um, and um, so we're asking everybody to get involved, um, be familiar with um, what the insect pest looks like, the Asian citrus psyllid. But it's so tiny. I mean, help us, Lance, when Eric and I are in our yard, because I know the minute he gets back from Colorado, he's going to start getting out there with a a magnifying glass, because these little buggers are teeny tiny. What are we looking for? Well, that's right. And, you know, the first thing that people can do is they can go to the website, CaliforniaCitrusThreat.org, and see exactly what it looks like. They congregate on the young foliage, um, the adults, which is about the size of an aphid, um, it's kind of distinctive when it feeds. Um, it points its tail or rear end up at a 45-degree angle. Um, but you can also see um, some of the dull orange nymphs, which uh, excrete a waxy tubule, a white waxy tubule. It's very unusual. Um, but you are going to need a magnifying glass. And basically what you want to do is inspect your trees um, at least once a month. But every time you go out and water, every time you go out and prune, um, you know, take a close look at what you're going to see. Um, now, you were talking about quarantines. There are quarantines throughout Southern California. There's actually two quarantines now that we've found the disease. <clears throat> um, and so people need to be aware of those. So where are the other, where are the other quarantines then? Well, the, the quarantine, you know, the Asian citrus psyllid was first found in the San Diego area in 2008. Um, and since then, it's been found in many areas through Southern California. So a quarantine was put in place to prevent the spread of that. It um, stretches all the way from San Diego to 
southern Santa Barbara County and out to Riverside. And in that quarantine area, um, you don't want to transport citrus out of the quarantine area or citrus parts or citrus relatives. Um, you want to make sure that you plant only California-grown certified trees. <clears throat> That's true wherever you are. Um, and you don't want to, if you are going to pre pruning your citrus, you should let the clippings dry for at least two weeks before you dispose of them or recycle them or double bag them before you dispose of them. So that's the first quarantine. The second quarantine is in place within a radius of about five miles of the Hacienda Heights area that you talked about. And that's a little bit more restrictive, actually a lot more restrictive. Um, you know, I'm reading from the press release, it says, residents of the quarantine areas are urged not to remove or share citrus fruit, trees, clippings, grass, or related plant material. Citrus fruit must be harvested and consumed on site. Um, the only citrus that will be allowed to move through the area is, some, is fruit that's been packed at a commercial packing house. So basically, um, you know, all the trees that are in the nurseries in the area have been put on hold. Mm. Um, you can't move citrus fruit, trees, or buds or anything. So uh, be aware of that. You know, you know, it concerns me, too. You know the folks that sell citrus on the freeway exits and stuff who mm. are not going to probably pay much attention or even it may, might not even be aware of this and i mean how do you stop a spread like this even it's to the point where it's even on the fruit itself you were saying well it doesn't trans it can't if you know if you leave foliage on the fruit they're just not taking any chances they want to make sure um that this doesn't have any chance of spreading so they are you know you shouldn't move the fruit around eat it in your own backyard um and it is a concern i mean that's how this spread around um the tree that they found that had the disease was a pumelo grafted to a lemon, and evidently the person had got the budwood or the propagating material from someone at their church and propagated the trees themselves, and um, by doing so, you know, we don't know where that budwood came from, but that's how the disease got into the tree. Mm -hmm. Wow. And when you say it, it doesn't get to the fruit unless it's on the leaf, I mean, if it did get to the fruit, it wouldn't make us sick. It's just a disease that affects the citrus. Right. But you yeah, wouldn't even want to eat the fruit, Eric, because it tastes, ugh, it makes it really sour, right? Well, yeah, that's the thing you need to understand. The, the insect is one thing. If it wasn't for the disease, you know, it may not have been a, such a big issue. But the disease itself has different yeah. symptoms. You know, the, basically what will happen is the tree will start to yellow, the fruit will be misshapen and taste terrible, like you say. You'll get leaf drop and fruit drop, and eventually it'll kill the tree. Terrible. I mean, it really gets it from the root to to all of its uh, to its leaves. I mean, from the inside out. It sounds that's like it just right. chokes chokes the tree. It, that's exactly right. It's a bacterial disease, and there is no cure. And so the 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 bug, the Asian citrus psyllid, is carrying potentially the disease to other citrus trees. That's right. That's how it's distributed. That's what we're worried about. And the disease originated in other parts of the world, or where did the disease itself originate? Well, the disease is it, it did originate from other parts of the world, and it's moved up through citrus areas like Brazil and into Florida, and in, they've even found it recently in parts of uh, te southern Texas. So it is moving around quickly. Hmm. Well, so the the quarantine right now in Hacienda Heights, they're they're fo they're focusing on that area, and I understand that people from the ag department through the uh, from the state are going from Citrus Grove or yard to yard and and looking to see if they have more signs of this. That's correct. Uh huh. And and they are treating wide areas around that tree just to make sure. But you know, like I said, the best place to get the information on this is the California Citrus Threat org. They have information and links so you can see exactly where the quarantines are and what they mean. Mm -hmm. And they can also tell you, you know, let's say you're out there doing what we say and you're inspecting your citrus um, and you find what you think are um, Asian citrus psyllids. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing you should do is cut those off and put them in a sealed plastic bag. And then you should call the 800 number, 1-800-491-1899. And they'll, you can report the findings there. Um, if it's confirmed that it's an Asian citrus psyllid, um, then um, the, count, the state may come out and treat the trees themselves. Mm. Um, and if they don't, um, you know, the home gardener has some options as well. Right, right. And we're going to talk about those options coming up in the next uh, segment. But let's repeat that phone number again. It's 800-491-1899. Is that correct? Correct. And, okay. Um, people can also, if they don't have an online 
uh, resources. They can also contact their ag commissioner, their county ag commissioner, and they have bulletins and information there as well. So it sounds like uh, this weekend will be a good time if you have citrus, and if you're here in Southern California, chances are you must have some citrus. And it's all citrus, right? It, it isn't just oranges and lemons. It's limes, grapefruit, anything citrus. That's right, and citrus relatives as well. There are a lot of ornamental plants out there that are citrus relatives. And, again, the website will have a list of everything. But you're right. This is the prime time. To, these, so we want to get a magnifying glass this weekend. Yep. <laughs> and we want to look at that new growth. get out and look at that. Well, So we're going to talk a little bit more as we're Eric Stromer and I with uh, Lance Walheim to help you with your citrus trees because of this terrible disease that's been spotted and we're going to try to stop it in its tracks and come up with some of the solutions that you can do in terms of prevention and by the way remember to call in for your chance to go to the Pasadena Showcase House on us call in now we're going to pick five winners 888-539-2980 888-539-2980 Home Wizards after this let me get this straight put the lime in the coconut you drink a yeah, I guess it would be impossible to eat if it got this darn disease. Are you aware of this, the terrible thing? It's affecting Southern California. California, welcome back home wizard Cindy Dole. Eric Stromer with our friend and gardening guru and citrus expert Lance Walheim. And we're not trying to just scare you. We are trying to alert you because this is real. It's this thing called uh, HLB. And it is a citrus disease, and it has many other names as well, um, yellow dragon, a greening disease. And it's a bug that comes from this little little gnat-like flea, the Asian psyllid. And if that bug is found on your citrus tree, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's disease, but it could potentially be bringing the disease to you. So, Lance, we were talking about how it looks. Um, so for folks who are just joining us, describe again, if we get a magnifying glass and we go to our citrus trees throughout the weekend, what are we looking for? First for the bug, then for the disease. Okay. First of all, you want to examine the young new growth, and you want to look very co- closely with a magnifying glass. The adults are about the size of an aphid, and the distinctive thing about them is that they point their rear end up at a 45-degree angle when they are feeding. So you should be able to notice that. Um, You can also look for the bright orange eggs, which are almond shape, um, and then all the the dull orange nymphs, which are the immature stage of the the insect. And the interesting thing about them is they excrete a waxy tubule um, as they're feeding, and so you'll see these small white tubules coming from the tail end of those. So those are the things you want to look for. Um, The disease itself, um, look for yellowing foliage and you know, with the yellowing foliage, um, it could be mistaken for a micronutrient or some type of nutrient deficiency, but the thing you'll notice, um, the disease with a micronutrient deficiency, the, the pattern on the leaf, the yellowing pattern, is the same from one side of the leaf to the other. With the disease, it is not. Um, so that's one way you can clear that um, confusion up. But you also, you know, yellowing foliage, dropping leaves, misshapen fruit that doesn't ripen properly, um, that, that doesn't taste good, um, and eventually the tree will lose its fruit and lose its leaves and it'll die. And again, we won't get sick from this, but no. um, our poor trees will. Okay. And uh, you want to keep the website CaliforniaCitrusThreat.org, CaliforniaCitrusThreat.org, uh, or the number 800-491-1899 handy if you do think that you're seeing something and it has it concerns you. So Lance, talk to us. Help Eric and, and me and all of us who are, who are really worried about our citrus trees. What can we do to prevent um, the disease from getting to the root of our tree? Okay. Well, the first thing, like I said, make sure that you understand the quarantines and follow them. Don't move the citrus around into California, out of the quarantine areas, anything like that. But, okay, let's say you found the Asian citrus psyllid. Um, you put it in a bag and you call the 800 number. Um, the state may come out and treat the trees or they may not. Um, If they don't and they've confirmed it's Asian citrus psyllid, you do have an option, and that's with a bare advanced fruit, citrus, and vegetable insect control. Um, Now, this is not a spray. Um, This you mix with water and you pour at the base of the tree. It's very important that you follow the label instructions. Um, That's the way you're going to get the best results and get the effectiveness that you need. Um, This product now can be applied as soon as the trees are finished blooming up until fall and into fall. The thing about it, though, is it can only be applied once a year. So we want to make sure that the pest is there in the tree before we use it so that we can get it at the most opportune time. 
Um, and again, the late reading a label is critical. You want to use it properly. Yeah. Um, the best thing to do is to water your tree the day before you're going to apply it, um, and then apply the material according to the label instructions. This is based on the size of the tree. You basically mix it with water and pour it at the base of the tree and then water it in afterwards. But this is a chemical, and I know a lot of people are thinking, wait a minute, can I put a chemical on something I'm going to eat? I mean, this is our fruit tree. That's right. You know, people do have that concern. But the great um, thing about the active ingredient that's in this product, the metacloprid, is that it concentrates in the foliage and does not concentrate in the fruit. It barely goes into the fruit, if at all. And, you know, if you look at the label, one thing you'll notice on the label is that there are no fruit pests on the label. It's all foliage pests. And so... Um, you know, this is something that people really don't have to worry about. Okay. So, and the timing again is we, we only can apply it once a year, but you want to watch for first the signs of the bug, or should we just as a preventative put it on there now? You know, because we can only use it once a year, we want to apply it once we've identified the pest is in the tree. Um, and I think that's so we can... You know, that may change as if we find that there's more occurrences of the disease. But for now, we want to make only use it when the pest has been confirmed in the tree. Okay. The Asian citrus psyllid. La- hey, Lance. Yes. Can you really see the bugs with their rear ends up at a 45-degree <laughs> angle? Because that not only makes me mad, but it humiliates me. <laughs> yes, guy, yeah, the, the bug is not an attractive critter, is it? I mean, now they're geez. mooning us. And they're oozing. Yeah, they're mooning us and they're oozing. You yes, know? <laughs> right. And uh, some of the nymphs also, you can sometimes you'll get sooty mold and it'll turn your trees black. So there's, it's not a good bug. That's all. the only thing about it. I, You know, it's just uh, it's got me seriously worried. And you have not spotted them on your citrus grove, right? Because you so, have quite a few trees. Yeah, and it's, it hasn't come up into the Central Valley at all. The pest has not been found up here, so just in the parts of Southern California that are quarantined. Uh-huh. So if you had a lot of trees, I mean, how much, how many, I don't know, how many bottles of the stuff would you need to get to protect all your trees? Well, it depends on the, on the size of them. Um, so you have to kind of read the label and see how many trees you can possibly treat. Um, but, you know, from a commercial standpoint, where I have, you know, quite a few trees, probably 3,000 trees, we're, we're better set up to apply it to larger areas. But it all depends on the size of the tree. If you read the label, you'll get an idea how much you're going to need. Mm-hmm. And then it's still, again, because it goes to the roots and you've mixed it with water, it isn't going to be impacting our pets or our people. It isn't, we're not going to be exposed to anything that's going to be hazardous. We'll be okay. Yeah, that's the nice thing about this product, because it's uh, mixed with water and poured at the base of the plant, um, you don't have to spray it. There's uh, less exposure. Mm-hmm. Okay. And is there, is there ever a point where you just have to cut the tree down and remove it and get it out and destroy it? If the it? tree has the disease, they will pull it out and, and take it out. That's, right. that's critical to preventing the spread of the disease. So this tree that um, um, they already found the disease, I think it's already been pulled out and um, has been sent for examination. So, it's, yeah, it's very important that the tree be removed and all the roots and everything killed. So and, and does it then, it gets in the soil and then it goes to another tree? or how No, does no, it doesn't get in the soil. It's got, the only way that it can be transmitted is by, you know, propagating disease material uh-huh. um, or through the insect. So, no, it doesn't hold over in the soil. But if you don't pull the tree out completely, say, and you leave some roots that cause some suckers, those suckers may have um, the disease in them and they could further spread it. So when they do pull out the tree, they want to make sure that they get the whole thing and kill the stump. Mm-hmm. Okay. Boy, we have some work to do, it looks like. Well, we really do. It's a huge it's a huge undertaking, but, you know, just think of how important it is. I mean, I just can't imagine. My whole life has revolved around citrus, and uh, I just can't imagine missing the fragrance, uh, missing the beautiful fruit, and, you know, the winter months. Um, I mean, they're beautiful ornamental edibles. They sure are, and it, it would be an eco- economic devastation, too, because oh, of sure this. Would. The citrus industry is a billion-dollar industry, and uh, I don't even want to think about that. Yeah. Well, thanks, Lance, for giving us the heads up. I think that we at least are armed with some more info to you know, get that magnifying glass, check out the citrus tree status, look for these signs. And it's good to know that the yellow leaves, because I know that, that a lot of times I experience yellow leaves, um, well, not on me, but on the citrus trees, <laughs> and, and it can be concerning. But now you say that it, one side of the leaf is looking different than the other side. Is, right. And is the, get more information about the product at com. We All have right. a lot of great information. Excellent, Lance. And then, of course, 
course, the uh, the agriculture website, or at least a, a good heads up website about the whole problem, is CaliforniaCitrusThreat.org. So, Lance Walheim, thanks again. We love having you back. And uh, we will talk in the next hour. Speaking of uh, propagating, we've got one of the designers uh, from the Pasadena Showcase House who is going to teach us and show us how do you make plants out of plants. The the Safeway uh, is one of the the neat things that's going on at the Pasadena Showcase House. And, in fact, if you call in now, your chance to win tickets on us, uh, 888-539-2980, 888-539-2980. We are going to select five winners coming up at the end of the show. So give us a call. Hour two of Home Wizards coming your way. Eric Stromer and me, Cindy Dole. We're back in a moment.